making sure everybody had a common um, definition of, uh, of marketing automation. And, and I'm sure that we don't, because when I went out to find a, a definition of marketing automation, I found about 80 of them. Um, you know, I just I was literally just at the, just this morning looking at a blog post on LinkedIn from, from Salesforce um, saying that uh, roughly six to eight um, contacts need, need to occur just before someone actually raises their hand to become a viable prospect. So the, the first part of the funnel is really about identifying hand raisers and um, you know that you don't have anybody to nurture really if you don't have anybody <laughs> who's already raised their hand. And so I'd, I'd like to talk about you know, to you guys about what, what percentage of the marketing effort do you think is on hand raising and how can we be more effective at that? A lot of times, this is the first time you've done it, and so you, you know, and so you get a website, and then, um, and then a lot of people say, okay, well now you have to focus on social media and SEO and all that other stuff, and um, and of course, none of that stuff actually helps people raise hands. That helps them get them to your website, but but a lot of times I think that we. Um, that small business owners tend to get lost in, in sexy stuff like SEO and, and, um, and social media and don't pay enough attention to, um, you know, to, to, to the place that people actually are going to be interacting with you and identifying themselves, which is the website. Um, in fact, there was a report I was trying to get just yesterday where you know, it asked for my, all my contact information and, and my phone number so we can contact you, and I, it made me stop, and I was like, I just wanted to read this report for something else, you know, and those are the things that um, you, you kind of have to test, uh, you know, what kind of form, what, what, you're, what, what you're asking for, um, and are you turning people away with that? I thought you were speed dating and all of a sudden they asked you to marry them. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they were just so bold about it, like, so we could contact you and I just kind of went, Let's face it, I mean, you know, consumers today are, are educated completely differently than, than they were even just 10 years ago. Um, and a lot of them have been educated to be um, vendor reverse. Your website isn't about you. Your website is a tool for your customers. Don't turn your website into the trifold brochure. Turn it into a, into a place where people can actually get to know you and get that information that they need that says, hey, you can solve my problem. There's, there's often a debate, you know, marketing people are like, look, I generated 5,000 leads. Yippee, aren't I great? Uh, salespeople usually are like, yeah, those leads were uh, and so this whole um, kind of quality versus quantity when it comes to leads, um, you know, let's let's talk about that. How do we find the highest quality? One of my hobbies, I, I, I have an old Bronco that I, I rebuilt. And one of the, my favorite websites is Tom's Bronco Parts, and the reason isn't because I can go there and and rebuild my Bronco from soup to nuts with that. It's because everything I buy from them, I can go directly there and download a very simple YouTube video and instruction manual on how to put the doggone thing on my truck. It's got very little to do with the fact that the product set is actually there. It's all about how they're helping me utilize it and helping me buy from them. Um, it's, uh, it's really effective for me as a consumer. So, you know, it, that's where the, the, align, the whole concept of sales marketing alignment has to, to improve a little bit. So sales can't just say, us marketing, you're giving me these awful leads. That's where you need to sit down and, and say, okay, well, like, you know, help me help you at this point. Tell me what a good lead looks like. Um, you know, what is it? So we can actually kind of say, you know, what of this 5,000 leads, if only 100 of them are the actual good leads, let's take a look at what that demographic is. What are the signs about this 100 that made them convert? You've had a lot of small businesses that come and say, well, we need to do, you know, everyone says we need to do lead scoring, let's do lead scoring. And, Say, hold on, those numbers have to be meaningful. Don't worry about numbers. Lead scoring for you is figuring out, you know, what are those steps in, in the sales funnel and how can we identify the people that are at that stage. Yeah, you know, one of the most effective things that, that's helped us in the last 12 months has been just the, the simple development of a content calendar. Just, just laying out in advance, even if it's just a quarter in advance. Um, you know, what we're going to do based on some of the metrics and information that we've gotten back and, and what's upcoming in our process. Maybe we've got a trade show coming up or, you know, whatever the case may be, or maybe we do have a new white paper coming up. And, and just actually planning out where that content goes instead of just kind of grabbing it and throwing it out there and seeing what happens with it. It's been a